Okay, we have got to draw a Vesper drawing of propanoic acid, uh, as well as label the sigma and pi bonds, and uh, you know, label the orbitals involved for each bond form. So a good place to start when doing this problem is to just get the structural formula out of the way, right? So we know propanoic acid is CH3, CH2, uh, COOH, and if we were to draw this in terms of a Lewis structure, this is what it would look like. So this problem assumes that we're starting from a Lewis structure, but instead we've got to convert this to a 3D VSEPR drawing. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're also asked to uh, label all the sigma and pi bonds, total them, and label the orbitals involved for each bond form. So what might be best is to actually start by labeling the orbitals, for example, this carbon here, as well as the geometry, we know is uh, got four electron regions, right? It has four bonds. One, two, three, four. Uh, carbon with four bonds, we know to be sp3 hybridized, right? Because it's using one s orbital and three p orbitals. That's what carbon has available. And so therefore, uh, we also know it is tetrahedral. That's true for this carbon as well. Okay. And let's take a look at our next carbon. This carbon here has three bonding regions, right? It's got one, two, three bonds. One of them happens to be a double bond, but in either case, it's got three bonding regions. That means it's sp2 hybridized and is therefore trigonal planar. Okay, next let's look at this oxygen here. Uh, in fact, this oxygen also has three electron regions. One, two, two from the lone pairs, and then a third from the bond. It's a double bond, but it's a one electron region. So the oxygen uh, is also sp2 and trigonal planar. Uh, this OH, the final OH, how many electron regions does it have? Uh, might be better if I redraw this hydrogen. It'll be a little more obvious. Okay, it's got four electron regions. That means it's sp3 hybridized. And it is also going to be tetrahedral. Okay. So this is what's going to inform our drawing, our three-dimensional drawing. The fact that uh, most of these carbons are tetrahedral, there's some sp2 trigonal planar. Uh, that's how we're going to have to. That's how we're going to know to draw the geometry. Um, while we're here, let's uh, total up the sigma and pi bonds. So, this is a sigma bond. It's a single bond. Sigma, 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 sigma. We'll just do the single bonds to start with. It's Simple enough. Okay. Now, the only tricky bond we have here is this bond. Now, double bonds are composed of a single sigma bond. So this still is a sigma, but it's a sigma and a pi bond. So one of the bonds is due to a sigma bond and the other is due to a pi bond. So in total, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sigma bonds and one pi bond. 10 sigma, one pi. Great, now let's get to drawing this. So we know we're starting with an sp3 uh, tetrahedral carbon right here. Tetrahedral carbons can have two bonds in the plane, and then they've gotta have one wedge and one dash. So this will be a hydrogen, this will be a hydrogen, this will be a hydrogen, and we'll make this one the carbon that it's also bond to. Okay, once again, we can have uh, one bond in the plane. Sorry, two bonds in the plane. That'll be the one we've already drawn, plus a new one. And then we'll do one wedge and one dash. This will be our third carbon. Now, this is trigonal planar, which means all of its bonds need to be in the plane. So it's got one bond going up into the left. We'll do one bond going up into the right. 
and then the double bond will have pointing down ones. Okay, sp3, trigonal planar, looks good. Now, this bond up and to the right, if you recall, is to an oxygen. So this will be an oxygen here. Uh, this is an sp3 hybridized oxygen, so it can have two bonds in the plane. We'll call that a hydrogen. And if we want to draw the lone pairs uh, with their geometry, then one of the lone pairs would be on a wedge, and the other lone pair could be on a dash. Uh, the final atom that we have left is this oxygen. Uh, as we discussed, this oxygen is also sp2. That's this oxygen here. And if it's sp2, that means all of its electron regions have to be in the plane because it's trigonal planar, which means it's going to have a lone pair in the plane down here and a lone pair in the plane down here. 